Hey YouTube, my name's Zach and I'm the creator of Cassandra Mar and today I'm going to start off a series of tutorials explaining how to create your own programming language. First off, this video and this series of videos were inspired by another video whose link should be directly under this one. Okay, let's get started. So, before you can make your own programming language, you have to ask what a programming language is. And, well, you've seen them, you've probably seen dozens of them. C++, C Sharp, J Sharp, F Sharp, JavaScript, ActionScript, Perl, Pascal, Turbo Pascal, assembly languages. There are tons of them out there, but what do they all have in common? Well, they all have GUI interfaces, graphical user interfaces. And that's all the buttons, taskbars, tool strips, progress bars that you see on the form. But if you strip that all away, and uh, strip every part of the graphics about it away, you're left with one thing, and that's the compiler. And the compiler within itself is the programming language. But before you can make your own compiler, you need to define the syntax of your language. And you can do that with any given language, but that leaves ambiguity, and that makes that ultimately makes a harder language for both the user and the computer to understand. So we fix this by using BNF and EBNF form. It stands for Bacchusnar form and extended Bacchusnar form. It sounds really weird, but it comes in really useful. It's really useful in the sense that it creates a very unambiguous language, which makes it an easier language for both the user and the computer to understand. And it makes it easier to code the compiler. So let's get started with the EBNF form that we're going to use to define the syntax of our language. So, in order to understand it, you need to know basically two things, and that's terminals and non-terminals. Terminals are anything that have greater than and less than signs around them, and non-terminals are the exact opposite. They don't have greater than and less than signs around them. And there are a few more things, such as this, which stands for OR. Basically, it means this statement STMT, which would be a terminal, could stand for this terminal or that terminal, so on and so forth. Um, and we also have this, which stands for zero or more times. Basically, this appears by terminals, and it states that it has to appear in the syntax of the language that the user types in zero or more times then you have the plus sign. The plus sign stands for one or more times. Basically it means that the user has to type that in if it's called on one or more times or else it won't work. Everything else can be zero or infinite. It doesn't matter. Okay guys, so I'm trying to keep these videos really really short so I'm gonna end it right about now and in the next video, we're actually going to get started with the actual syntax of the language that we're going to be using um, to code the compiler. And see you then.